downstroke of the molar. As everybody says, it's a whipping action, but uh, uh, personal insight uh, found best for myself is that the movement needs to begin from the elbow. Uh, okay, uh, in order to, it's kind of a wind up, if you will, toward uh, a whipping action. Now, uh, instead of starting with the wrist or the hand or the forearm coming up like that, and then everything follow, it's, I found it's best to start with the elbow going first. This initiates initiates everything, and after that, all else follows. Uh, kind of like a whip or a snake, if you will. Everything, whatever it moves. Everything after that must follow it instead of the opposite. Okay, so it has to start from here. We think this is the head, but it's using a lot of momentum uh, starting from the elbow. Okay, so you have your elbow going up. If you notice, uh, there's a slight drop of the forearm. Okay, and then there's the slight, not underneath, there's the slight wrist hang. Okay, now. Once you reach, you don't have to go up parallel, because that's, we're exaggerating the whole movements altogether, period. But we don't have to go parallel. But once you reach this point, you have a slight decline here, and then a slight wrist drop here. Now, once you do that, your, your elbow starts to drop. drop. You're up in slow motion, your elbow will go down. And as it does, you'll notice, of course, that the in, it's now on the incline, but it still has a wrist drop. It's an, it's an incline going down. Now because of the, the momentum, and we keep the wrist joint loose, right? Not, tiny, not tensing up or tightening the muscles, okay? As much as totally possible, totally as much as possible. Because we do that, the, when we're moving quicker, as the elbow starts to go down, it creates a torque and throws back the hand slightly, and then it comes forward again to make the stroke, kind of like, that kind of a movement there. You see it in the, in the wrist joint area, the hinge joint coming down and there is right there. See it comes back and then goes down. So it has that hang to it like we said. As they hang, that's fine, that's great. Underneath, just a little bit, slight, slight, slight. Now, you're here, as you drop the elbow, it drops and then because of the torque it goes back and then comes down. It creates more power. So, kind of like that kind of a movement there. So it starts again to wind up from the elbow, not from the hand or the wrist or anywhere else, but from the elbow. You're here. I have my, my arms hanging pretty much from the shoulders. Get a sense of the, just the weight of them, let them hang instead of holding them up. Let the frame of your body hold up your arm instead of, except uh, it's all the way down to your elbow, because you have to hold this up and be parallel, more or less parallel to the ground, okay? Then you have a slight, again, it's pretty consistent, a wrist drop. Okay. Now, as the elbow comes up, okay, it comes down. Now, I'm not swinging out this way, just coming up, okay, uh, in a comfortable way. Um, as that comes up, yeah, comes up, the wrist drops, and then here we are again, we have the incline, or decline, I should say, coming down, slight wrist drop. You drop it. Bang, wrist comes back, comes forward, comes down, makes a stroke, and then you have what's called a flyback. The flyback for me, from my understanding, does not break this plane here. It goes bang and stops without a wrist lock, without tensing, just stopping the wrist. You notice the twist, it's a twisting, it's not this movement here at that point. The flyback is from the side. And the same with the taps are from the side. See? Okay, so you have this and a flyback and comes, like I say, to this plane and doesn't break beyond, it doesn't go past here. It's pretty much straight. And you also see, notice here on the the wrist here on the flyback, when it stops, you come down, bang, it stops, it's, I guess you could say flush. There's no gooseneck here, there's no bend this way and there's no bend inside. The fingers, by the way, I should say, the fingers are not moving at all, I mean virtually Okay, it's, it's not an inanimate object, the hand, but the point is to try to create a kind of a, 
uh, a control, a scientific term, a controlled environment, so that the only thing moving is basically up here, your, your shoulder, your elbow, your wrist, you know, these kind of things, these movements, okay? But avoiding as much movement as possible with the fingers, okay? So you have your downstroke and a flyback, and then your wind up again for the downstroke. Okay? And if you can, just let your, your arm fall, if you will. It, maybe you need to, to, at first, maybe put, let it come pulled in without, I should say, without the muscular tension. Now what I kind of try to think of is if you were resting your arm on, a, on some surface here, like a filing cabinet. And all this, and you put your, your weight of your of your arm on there, just resting as you're talking. So all of a sudden, without realizing, somebody slides it out from your arm, and your arm falls. Okay, that type of fall away kind of thing, it just falls down. You know, that's the kind of thing we're looking for. We're not looking to to squeeze in. We're not looking to make a muscle here. We're looking to use the body in a way that it works best for us without with the least amount of tension. So that is your downstroke. And the wind up, and like Mr. Chapin said, when well, we do the wind up, your elbow goes up, but it doesn't go underneath. The stick doesn't go underneath. You're not bending for cock. You're not twisted and whatnot all around. Uh, so you go up, wrist drop, bang, and come down. And you notice the elbow comes right in. If you stop your elbow short of making contact with you, like bang, like that, it makes contact. But if you stop here, you're using muscle to stop that. And if you're doing this 20, 30, 50 times, or numerous times, you're building more and more tension. So you need to let that come down and really just, just fall into your side. You know, that kind of thing. Don't hold it up Don't con without control. You know, first, you're going to have to feel the control of it. You're taking it very slow just to make sure the movements and the essential parts of this are the movements. Okay? So you go with a flyback. Wind up, flyback. And it's as though that stroke is not coming from, so we say, the Gladstone, the, uh, the George Armstone, the, who else was that, Morello, all these fellows. It's not as though it's coming from the wrist here, this kind of movement straight on when it comes down. It's as though it's coming from the side, not exactly the side. You don't want to bend your wrist in an angle or anything. Again, it's, it's flush, okay? And it comes down. And okay, after the stroke is made, it's just real, let the momentum, let the rebound take over the stick, and you just stop the stick at the angle where you want to, which is pretty much perpendicular to the ground. Okay, I think that should do it for this part, the downstroke.